I hate ladders. I hate fucking ladders, okay? Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to Your Everyday Nerd, the show where... Don't... Don't dislike this video. I see you. I see you about to dislike this video. Don't dislike it. I like... I like the Mega Man franchise. But Mega Man sucks. Get what I'm getting at? Not yet? Well, just bear with me. Because I got some stuff to say. I'm your host, Zack Snyder, and today's Throwback Thursday. Happy Thursday. On Thursdays, I take a look at media that's retro. That's right, we're going all the way back to the 80s and the 90s. Anything from 1980 to 1999 is fair game on Thursdays. As a lot of you probably know, Mega Man 11 just released this week, and I'm currently playing it on Twitch, link in the description. But before the 11th entry in the series comes out, and I will be doing an episode of Your Everyday Nerd on this game, I wanted to get my feet wet back in Mega Man one more time. In the past, I've played Mega Man 2 through 5. I skipped the first game because of reasons I'll mention in a bit. And I haven't really had the chance to get any further in the series yet, but I decided that this was the time to really dig deep into Mega Man. Okay, that sounds a little bit wrong, but bear with me. Now more than ever is the perfect time to really get into these games, especially considering the fact that the Legacy Collections for both the Classic Series and the X Series are out on all consoles, including my favorite console, the Nintendo Switch, which you know what that means. That means you can play Mega Man while you're on the toilet. You can play all of them. Every single one of them. It's amazing. So I brought it upon myself to go back to the very beginning of the series and start fresh with Mega Man 1 and 2. Mega Man, or Rockman as he's known in Japanese, released in 1987 on the Nintendo Entertainment System and was created by Capcom. Capcom originally began with arcade games, but they seemed to have struck gold in 1987 because this wasn't just the year that the Blue Bomber started, it was also the year that they started Street Fighter. When you start Mega Man 1, you'll realize that there's not really a story here. You're kind of just thrown straight into being introduced to a select screen with six different Robot Masters. This will continue to be the tradition, although they increase the Robot Masters from six to eight in every single entry afterwards. There is, however, technically a plot in the instruction manual. Essentially, there were two scientists that used to work together, Dr. Light and Dr. Wily. They created these robots that could help humanity, but one day Dr. Wily gets jealous of Dr. Light and he makes these robots evil. We're not quite sure why he gets jealous. Maybe Dr. Light stole Dr. Wily's ramen behind his back in the dorm room. Either way, it's at this point that Dr. Light creates Mega Man. The only good robot left. It's his job to go destroy the robots and stop Dr. Wily for the good of Monsteropolis. Who comes up with these names? It's just like that the Coolsville shit from the Scooby Doo episode we did the other day. So it's our job as Mega Man to go destroy the six robot masters, and that's what we do. There's Bomb Man, Guts Man, Elect Man, Cut Man, Ice Man, and Fire Man. You gotta catch them all, am I right? That, that's the wrong franchise. Sorry. It's a simple plot, sure, but we don't play Mega Man for the plot. We play it for the gameplay. At its core, Mega Man's a game about jumping and shooting. You do a lot of jumping, and then you do a lot of shooting. You kill a robot master, suck up his powers like his last name is Kirby, and then you get to use their powers in the future stages, and then you do a lot more jumping and shooting. It's actually pretty awesome. You truly are the mega as of mans. But... Mega Man sucks. <laughs> Here's where the thumbnail comes into play. Here's where I kind of clickbaited you guys a little bit. The Mega Man franchise is great. There's a ton of great Mega Man games out there, and we're gonna get into the second game in a bit. But Mega Man, Mega Man 1 to be precise, kind of sucks. Here's why. For starters, it's the first game in the series. So just like many first games in a series, it has a lot of room to grow. Capcom couldn't make Mega Man 11 on the NES back in 1987. That would be absurd. They had to grow the franchise and figure out what works and what doesn't work, and so the first Mega Man game is really more of a stepping stone 
rather than a full game in the series in my opinion. Take each of the six robot stages for example. They're all really short, long enough to get irritating at moments, but short enough to speedrun them after you understand exactly what kind of enemies you need to deal with. The most common things that you end up dying from on these stages are things that are poorly designed. These levels are bad. It's clear that Capcom eventually figures out good level design, but Mega Man 1 had some awful levels. Take for instance Gutman stage, where you destroy these little construction hats in the ground and then, oh great, I'm just gonna fall a bunch of times because my life sucks and I hate myself. I mean, sure, after a ton of time of analyzing exactly how these platforms work, you can get through this and the rest of the stage easy. It's, but it's dumb. It's incredibly dumb. And it's one of the reasons I didn't beat Mega Man 1 years ago when I got into the series. This kind of thing happens a lot. You can technically do the stages in any order. In fact, I went and beat the stages clockwise, which is not the right order to do them in, but you can do that. Usually you want to figure out what the boss weaknesses are so you can get the right boss item and then you can do the stages in that particular order, but you're technically free to do them in any order. In Mega Man 1, there's just dumb level design moments that you can really only circumvent by doing the stages in a certain order. And sure, I know what you're thinking, well that's the way they made the game. No, that not really. Sure, this, this happens in other entries as well. Like in Mega Man 2, you can bypass an entire disappearing block section in Heat Man stage if you do Air Man stage first because you get the item too, and it's honestly the best way to beat that stage in general, but take a Lek Man stage for instance in Mega Man 1. There's these ridiculous enemies that move back and forth on these platforms. You can shoot them and they'll stop moving for a second, which allows you to jump off and get past them on the screen, but it's a lot easier if you beat Cut Man stage first get his weapon, and then kill these enemies instead. You could say, well that's good level design, and I completely disagree. Solely based on my next complaint. There are physics in this game. That's right, There, there, there's physics in this game, a specific little physics property. Sit down, you're about to learn, because there's a physics thing in this game that I, I don't understand why they did this, but in Mega Man 1, when you move, and then stop moving, they have what I like to call the inertia property. See, in physics, inertia is something that happens when something that was in motion stops moving. It stops moving, but right before it goes to a complete halt, it pushes forward just a little bit more. Mega Man 1 has Mega Man doing this the entire time in default. When you stop moving, he still moves just a little bit to the left or to the right, and it's infuriating. I don't know why this is in the game. Especially in the moments when you're trying to do a jump onto other platforms and not get hit by enemies. I also just want to mention that I personally hate the ladders in this game. They suck. Moving on. And finally, the game has a scoring system. I know it's probably because this was Capcom's very first console game, so they were so used to arcade games which had scores, they were like, we gotta put a score in this, right? We, we just got to. But the score has nothing to do with the game, rather than just taking up space on the screen. Are you telling me that kids went back to school and were like, did you get a 23,000 on Like Man stage? Cause I got a 24,000. Nobody did that. Nobody did that, right? And not only does it take up place on the screen, but when you kill other enemies, they drop random point balls that just have value to giving your score more points instead of health, which you would have preferred in the first place. After you beat the six robot masters, you're then brought into the Wily stages. We have four stages in total, all of which are equally annoying. There's the Yellow Devil. He's the first boss fight in the Wily stages, and he's pretty hard. Luckily, there's a little bit of a glitch that you can do to quickly beat him. So moving on, there's a quick little boss rush, and then, wait, you fight yourself? Yeah, you fight yourself. This is also kind of difficult. We then get an easy boss fight for some weird reason, and then it's on to another boss rush, right before you take on Dr. Wily, the final boss. I should also mention that the final Wily stage has some really tough platforming sections too, like they're just badly level designed. I 
got through this through safe states <laughs> and perseverance and dedication. If you're able to beat this game on a regular NES cartridge, I don't know how you did it because I needed those save states on the Legacy Collection. So kudos to you if you're able to do that. I, I, I think the main problem that stems from Mega Man 1 is just the fact that they do so much better with every other game later on. It, it just, it just, this just ends up being the bottom of the barrel, which, you know, in the grand scheme of things, isn't actually a bad thing. It's actually good, you know? Failure is an important thing to success, and Capcom failed with this game, but they failed fast, and it's clear that they figured out exactly what worked and what didn't work, at least for the most part. It even shows in the sales figures that Mega Man 1 didn't sell too well, but Mega Man 2 and then especially Mega Man 3 both went on to sell a lot more. But here's where things also confuse me. Why did they release Mega Man 1 when it's not really that good and Mega Man 2 is so much better. I mean, Mega Man 2 is leagues better than Mega Man 1 and it only came out a year afterwards. If that had come out three years afterwards, I understand. There needs to be growth, there needs to be improvement. But it only came out a year afterwards. Couldn't they have just combined some of the few good ideas that they had in Mega Man 1 with Mega Man 2 and just have spent an additional year working on that game instead? It, it's just... It's just truly amazing to me the differences between these two games. Mega Man 1 looks like a sheer ripoff in comparison to Mega Man 2. It's one of the rare times that a sequel ends up being better than the original. But what is it that Mega Man 2 does better? Well, for starters, it has more content, which is not always a better thing, but in this case, that content is also really good. This time we have eight robot masters instead of six. The Wily Sages are six of them instead of four. We also have way better designed levels, albeit a few instances where levels can be irritating, but nothing too difficult. The actual boss weapons are more fun to use. The music is some of the best in the entire series. I mean, Mega Man 2's music is, it's so good. Mega Man 2 is so well polished that I'm surprised it's not like the sixth entry in the franchise instead of just the second. We even get a moment in the plot that is funny and interesting. At the end of the game, we defeat one of Dr. Wily's machines, which is a very similar boss fight to the Wily fight at the end of Mega Man 1. And then, oh sh is that an alien? It is an alien, and you have to defeat him with bubbles. Not the Powerpuff Girl, but actual bubbles. I bet Star-Lord's gun would actually work pretty well here. But after you defeat the alien, we find out it was still Dr. Wily the whole time. The alien was just a hologram. Like, what? It's funny, and it's a good ending to a game that's not just like it was just a dream like some games do. I'm looking at you, Super Mario Bros. 2. Looking at you, Super Mario Bros. 2. But as much as I love Mega Man 2, and I have to say, it's my favorite of the franchise so far, I do have some issues with it. Mainly, those issues derive from the Wily Sages. There's a few moments where the level design is once again not particularly that great. The first moment is the boss fight against the Mecha Dragon. This fight is difficult already, but it's even more difficult because of sprite flickering. And I, I still don't understand how or why this happens, but essentially every time you go against this boss, Mega Man Sprite, his character on the screen, just starts flickering. And, and sometimes he just straight disappears for an entire full second or two. I thought it was a hardware on the NES and it may very well be, that might be what it is. But even on the Wii U Virtual Console, even on NES ROMs, even on the Legacy Collection that I just played last week, the sprite flickering still occurs. So, I don't know, maybe they're just keeping it in there to preserve the authenticity of the game, but frankly, it makes what could have been a great boss fight something that I hate going against every single time I play this game. And I've played this game probably four or five times now. Then there's resource management, which I just hate. I hate resource management, I hate it in real life, I hate it in video games. 
Resource management is something that you have to get used to in Mega Man games because you get these different boss weapons, but the fuel for each of these weapons is not unlimited. They, they will deplete and you will have to go fill them up by collecting the proper power-ups. My problem occurs in one of the Wily Sages specifically. When you're forced to use item one to move from a ladder at the bottom of the screen to a ladder at the top of the screen. And if you don't do this the right way, then you'll run out of item one fuel, which you, you might as well just kill yourself at that point in the game, not in real life. Uh, though I've thought about killing myself after that multiple times because it's just, it's very time consuming to have to go all the way back down, refill your item only to know that you're gonna probably screw up that section once more and you're gonna have to do it again. Because it's, it's just a terrible screen, it shouldn't exist. Resource management is fine, but it shouldn't be this way. This is awful. There's also a puzzle in Mega Man 2. There's this boss called the Boo Beam Trap, I know, dumb name. It's a boss fight in Wily Stage 4 where after you're encouraged to use crash bombs a few times throughout the stage, you realize, oh, I need, uh, I need crash bombs to fight this boss. And you only have a couple of options. You could either destroy all the walls, die, purposely die, this is part of the boss fight, die, fill up your crash bombs, and then destroy the actual boss. Or you could only destroy two of the walls and figure out the correct path like a puzzle to kill the boss. Oh, also you'll probably need either item one and or item three to finish up the room so make sure you have enough of that fill it up too so again resource management it sucks fortunately the rest of the wily stages in my opinion are great i love mega man 2 it's a fantastic game that fixes just about every single complaint i had about mega man 1. it also just has a few issues itself at the end of the day mega man 1 and mega man 2 are such a weird duo of games they came out only a year apart, and arguably, they're the worst and the best games in the series. Mega Man 1, in my eyes, is a failure. Sure, it established the Mega Man lore, it established the Mega Man jump and shoot mechanic, and even the fact that we still choose the stages in order that we want to play them in, along with the Wily stages being a constant in the series. It's a foundation to the Mega Man franchise, but a very rocky one at that. Did you get that pun? Gee, that fun Mega Man's name in, in Japanese is Rockman. It's very rocky. On the other hand, Mega Man 2 is the complete opposite. It's a very solid foundation of the franchise. It does almost everything right. And sure, you could argue that future games in the series are better, but I personally think a lot of that comes down to preference. And you can also argue that Capcom doesn't innovate a lot after Mega Man 2. I mean, the fact that Mega Man 11 has this double gear system is dope as hell because it's innovative. It's something different and unique. This is something that we haven't seen in the series in a while. And sure, I haven't actually played through every Mega Man game yet, but I have played three through five. And I have to tell you, they don't really improve much on Mega Man 2, quite as much as Mega Man 2 improved on Mega Man 1. It's a confusing start to a popular series, but at least now you know, don't play the first Mega Man game. It's Trash Man. Is there a Trash Man? Is there, is there, is there a Trash Man in, the, in these games? <laughs> Frank, what the hell are you doing, man? Hey, that's my character. I'm the Trash Man. I come out, I throw trash all over the, all over the ring, and then, well, I guess I'm a sellout now. Here on YouTube, it can be difficult to take things to the next level. When you've decided that you want to take video creation seriously, that's when it's time to either give up <laughs> because YouTube's really hard or buckle down and get yourself into a mentorship group. Here's where Awesome Creator Academy comes in. Sometimes you need a bit of help, structure, and accountability to be successful as a creator. The Awesome Creator Academy Mentoring Group gives you a place where you can get training, advice, and support when working on your projects, growing your brand, and building your business from people who are working just as hard as you are. I've personally been a part of the Awesome Creator Academy for a year now, and not only has it helped me be better focused and make more realistic goals, but it's put me in a place with other creative professionals that want to succeed just as much as I do. It's a place where I go to share my successes, 
my failures, and everything in between. And I highly recommend it. And with all that being said, if you check out the link in the description box below, you can become a member of the Awesome Creator Academy today, which will not only help you become a more successful creator, but it also makes sure that I'm able to eat this month. Because let me tell you, when you're ready to take YouTube to the next level, you still have to eat. I know, it sucks. That's all we have time for today. Thank you for watching the video. Go ahead and hit that like button if you liked it. Go ahead and hit that dislike button if you're salty, I guess. Go ahead and subscribe because we're doing this show six days a week. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.